ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಮನೋಬುದ್ಧೀರ್ ಅಶ್ ಅಶ್ಯಾಧಿಷ್ಠಣ ಮುಚ್ಚತೆ ಏತೈರ್ವಿಮೋಹ ಯಾತೀಶ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಮವೃತ್ಯ ದೇಹಿನ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಮ್ ದಿ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಕವರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ರಿಯಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿ ವಿಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಪರ್ಪಟ್ ದಿ ಎನಿಮಿ ಆಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಚರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಟಜಿಸ್ ಪೊಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಬಾಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಸೋಲ್ and therefore lord krishna is giving hints of those places so that one who wants to conquer the enemy may know where he can be found mind is the center of all the activities of the senses and thus when we hear about sense objects the mind generally becomes a reservoir of all ideas of sense gratification and as a result the mind and the senses become the repo- repositories of lust next the intelligence department becomes the capital of such lustful propen- propensities intelligence is the in- immediate next no next door neighbor of the spirit soul lusty intelligence influences the spirit soul to acquire the false ego and identify itself with matter and thus with the mind and the senses the spirit soul becomes addicted to enjoying the material senses and mistakes this as true happiness this false identification of the spirit soul is very nicely explained in shrimad bhagavatam yashyatma buddhir kyupane tri dyatuke svadriti kala pradeshu bauma ijya diha yat tirta buddhir shalilena karhi sij jnanesh abhijneshu sa eva gokarana ha gokara ha a human being who identifies this body made of the three elements with the self who considers the by products of the body to be a kingsman who considers the land of birth worshipable and who goes to the place of pilgrimage simply to take a bath rather than meet men of transcendental knowledge there is to be considered like a ass or, or a cow <laughs> Yes, all right. Very, very important and exact information is given to us in this verse. How the lust is seated in the senses and in the mind and in the intelligence. So Krishna is identifying for us which areas we have to be very cautious of. The, the senses, of course, are guiding us. we have the knowledge acquiring senses and we have the working senses and the senses direct the body but higher than the senses is the mind in the mind we have desires so these desires are not always pure desires we have lusty desires desires which are simply for the body so that's a sign of lusty uh, the the when the mind become becomes contaminated lusty and higher than the mind is the intelligence and the intelligence also can become polluted and the intelligence is seated next to the soul so prabhupad points out that because intelligence is so close to the soul so the the spirit soul also acquires the false ego although the spirit soul itself is always pure but somehow we acquire this false ego and we identify ourselves and therefore prabhupada gives this verse at the end of the purport which is a famous from the shrimad bhagavatam that if someone thinks himself to be the body then they're no better than a foolish animal like a cow or an ass so it's very important for us to be on guard against this lust how do we know that our senses our mind and intelligence have been influenced by lust well lord krishna has already described to us from lust comes anger 
and when the uh, the the last the last cause is a degradation of the living entity, we become influenced by so many material desires, all in relation to the body, and all centered around sense gratification. So very important for us to guard against this enemy, lust. And we have to purify the lust. We have to make it, instead of lust, we have to make it into love. We have to develop love for Krishna. Lust is for the body. We're thinking about our body and our senses and our mind. We're thinking about enjoying. We want to be the enjoyer. This is lust. This is the nature of material desire. And we have to be on guard against that tendency. We have to understand. We are not the enjoyer. We are not the purusha. We are prakriti. Prakriti means the nature, means we're dominated. We're not the predominator, we're the predominated, right? We're meant to be the servant, we're not the master. But the false ego causes us to think, I'm the master, I'm the enjoyer, I am the controller. So this is the nature, the foolish animal. The human being thinks himself to be the body, which is made up of senses. And or he, he may also think, we'll give more examples. One is we think we're the body. The other thing is we, we think the land of our birth is worshipable. That our land of our birth, my country, we feel so proud, national pride. We're so foolish. We identify with the country of our birth and we identify with the products of the body also. And we go to, then it says, you go to a holy place of pilgrimage simply to take a bath rather than to meet men of transcendental knowledge. And so we see in the holy places, people go there and they're happy just to take the bath. And they never hear, they never learn anything, they never inquire from the people there. But the real purpose in coming to the holy place is to hear, to bathe our consciousness in spiritual sound vibration, not just only to take the bath in the river. So if we do like that, if we do these silly things, then we're considered to be on the level of an animal, like a cow or an ass. They don't have intelligence. And the same way, if we don't use our intelligence properly, then we're no better than these animals. Are there any questions? Is it all, is it clear? To, could, do we all understand when we're being controlled by our lust, when we're a victim of lust. Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's, uh, uh, we have to be careful of these three areas, right? Mind, intelligence, and senses, these three areas. Yeah. Yes, they can easily be, they are contaminated. We developed the, yeah. the, the, the contamination is very subtle. And yeah. this contamination causes us to be foolish, to do foolish things and to act on the bodily platform. So we have to learn to be on guard against the enemy. Just like if you know there's the enemy, some enemy, we know the enemy is there. We're just now people know about COVID, so people are all trying to wear masks and they're trying to do many things to protect themselves, right? And similarly, if there's terrorists, if there's some terrorists coming, 
we're very careful. People take a lot of precautions when you go anywhere. They will check your luggage to see what you're carrying because they worry about terrorism. So here we have a very subtle enemy, a very subtle terrorism in the form of lust. And this lust is very subtle. It permeates, it gets into all these things, gets into the mind, and gets into the intelligence. Lusty intelligence, lusty mind, lusty senses. We want to enjoy. We're thinking everything is for our material pleasure. So this is the illusion. This is the ignorance. We have to control. We have to conquer over this lust. So Lord Krishna will go on. He will explain more to us. All right. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Ramya Mataji, can you please read 3.41? Uh, sure, Vaishnavi, thank you. Thank you. Tasmatavam Indriyani Addu Niyamya Bharatarasva Pramanam Prajegahi E Enam jena pijnyanane nasanam. Translation. Therefore, O Arjuna, best of all the Bharatas, is in the very beginning curb this great symbol of sin by regulating the senses and slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. Puppet. The Lord advised Arjuna to regulate the sins from the very beginning so that he could curb the greatest sinful enemy, lust, which destroy the urge for self-realization and specific knowledge of the self. Jena refers to knowledge of self as distinguished from non-self or in the other words, knowledge that the spirit soul is not the body. Vijnana refers to specific knowledge of the spirit soul, constitutional position, and his relationship to the supreme soul. It is explained thus in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Janam Pranama Kuyame Yat Vidnana Samavitam Sa Ragasyam Tat Agnamsha Krahana Gatithamaya. The knowledge of the self and supreme self is very confidential and mysterious, but such knowledge and specific realization can be understood if explained with their various aspects by the Lord himself. Bhagavad Gita gives us that gen general and specific knowledge of the self. The living entities are part and parcel of the Lord and therefore they are sim simply means to serve the Lord. This consciousness is called Krishna consciousness. So from the very beginning of life, one has to learn this Krishna consciousness and thereby one may become fully consciousness and act accordingly. Lust is only the prevented reflection of the love of God, which is natural for every living entity. But if one is educated in Krishna consciousness from the very beginning, that nature love of God cannot deteriorate into lust. When love of God deteriorates into lust, it is very difficult to return to the normal condition. Nonetheless, Krishna consciousness is so powerful that even a late beginner can become a lover of God by following the regulative principles of devotional service. So from any stage of life or from the time of understanding his urgency, one can begin regulating the sense in Krishna consciousness, devotional service of the Lord and turn the lust into love of Godhead, the highest professional stage of human life. Hare Krishna. So, Lord Krishna is describing how to overcome the enemy lust. 
and he talks about regulating the senses, regulation of the senses. The senses, of course, they're very demanding. Generally, we have a lot of problems trying to regulate our senses. Often we want to eat more. Sometimes we will sleep more than we need to sleep. Sometimes we talk more than we need to talk. Sometimes we're, you know, we're doing all the things we shouldn't be doing. The things we should be doing, we do less. And the things we shouldn't be doing, we do more. So this is a problem with the senses. We have to regulate the senses. We will see in a, another few chapters, Lord Krishna will speak about regulating the senses, regulating our don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. Should be regulated in, in work and in recreation. Cannot just simply have only work without recreation. There must also be some recreation. So recreation is also there for a Krishna conscious person. We have uh, recreation. We have kirtan and we have festivals. It's all recreation. Sometimes we go to the park, a japa walk. It's also recreation. So these kind of activities can be regulated. They help us, to, when we're regulated, then it helps us to control the mind and senses. So if, we're, if the senses are regulated, then we don't become a victim of the mind and senses. We don't degrade ourselves, And we protect ourselves from lust. So... Prabhupada explains the relationship between lust and love. That love is the, the real form and lust is the perverted reflection. But the love means love of God, to love the spiritual particle within everyone. We have to recognize every individual, not just simply as the body, but we have to see them as the soul. We're in the, if we're thinking of the body, we're identifying with the body, that's like the animal. But human beings are meant to be intelligent to understand themselves as a soul. That we're not the body. We're all souls. The body is only the dress. We want to identify ourselves as a soul. So the soul is not Indian or Swiss or British or American. The soul is a part of Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. And the nature of the soul is to be eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. But the body, the body is temporary. And we identify with the body means we identify with the misery, the pain, the difficulties of the body. So that's the nature of lust. We become miserable. We become depressed. The more we think about the body, we have to overcome the, this tendency to think in terms of the body. We have to think in terms of the soul. And the way to do that is by regularly hearing and chanting. If we chant Hare Krishna mantra regularly, then we can remind ourselves that we're not the body, that we are all spiritual beings, we're spirit souls. Is it clear? Any question? Yes. Simon? Yes. Simon has a question today? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm right. Uh, reading, please, in the chat. Oh, okay, you wrote in the chat. Okay. Maybe should I read for you, Guru Maharaj? And I opened it. Okay, there are some who are unable to control their senses 
For example, nymphomaniacs, alcoholics, drug addicts. So is there any technique to improve? <laughs> yes, these people have serious problems. Drug addicts and alcoholics or nymphomaniacs, they have serious problems. Is there any technique to improve them? They have to give up these habits. They have to correct themselves. How to do that? Well, they should practice Krishna consciousness. They have to be willing to practice Krishna consciousness. Oh, anybody can become Krishna conscious, but they have to follow the process. Means no intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating, and no illicit sex, right? The four regulative principles. So in order to get, to get rid of all these bad habits, if people will chant Hare Krishna and agree to follow this, the diet of the devotee and the principles of the devotee, then they can be saved. But we know it, it's, it's difficult for people to do this. They have so much bad habit. They have these tendencies towards sinful activities. How to get them to give up the drug addiction or their alcohol addiction. They can do it, but they have to, they have to want to do it. Often they don't really want to do it because they're, they're so degraded, they're so contaminated by lust that they cannot give up their bad habits. So we say Krishna consciousness is not for lazy people and it's not for crazy people. You know, some, often you see people who are alcoholics and nymphomaniacs and drug addicts, they're practically crazy. They're so addicted to sense gratification, to their bodily pleasures, that they're, they're like mad people. They're like crazy. They, they're not doing themselves any good. They take a lot of alcohol. It's very damaging to the organs of the body. Or they take drugs, very addictive. They will spend so much money and their health will be completely ruined physically and mentally. And the same with the, the, nymph, the nymphomaniacs. They also become completely ruined by their sinful activities, physically, mentally, psychologically. They're no longer normal people. They're, they're like crazy people, mad people. So Krishna consciousness is not for crazy people or mad, lazy people either. You want to become Krishna conscious, certain things you have to do. Just like Krishna conscious program, you have to chant. You have to chant every day. And you should have a, a Krishna conscious lifestyle. It means you don't just eat anything and everything. We have a special diet. We have to follow. You follow the process, you get a good result. But if people won't follow, if they can't follow, then how can they expect to become Krishna conscious? This is a problem. Right? Okay, thank you very much. We can't help the, 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 these unfortunate people. You may say they're a victim they're victims of this modern society. Yeah, but they have their own karma. Not everybody's in that situation. They have misused their free will. They've misused their independence. And they've spent all their time and money on drugs or alcohol or doing sinful things. So Krishna gives everyone free will. What, what do you want? What do you want to do? Krishna does not force us. He gives us free will. 
But if we don't want to serve Krishna, if we don't want to love him, he does not force us. You love your drugs, you love your alcohol, go ahead, suffer. And see what kind of results you get from that. What do you say, Ramya Mataji? Correct, Guruji. What you said is correct. <laughs> yeah, we need to. <laughs> uh, but I have a, you can say, very stupid question. Anything more is not good for health, they say. But how can you justify that? Only love for God, if it exceeds, uh, uh, it's good for us. <laughs> Well, love of, you see, love of God is a natural condition. But the other things are not natural. The other things are all based on our lust. And they, they cause us, they bring us so many problems. They bring us so many difficulties. Because we're trying to enjoy in the wrong way, we suffer more but love for krishna love of god that's unlimited and that is natural that's a healthy condition there are certain things which you do which are natural the natural things are not going to do you any harm they're good for you but the unnatural things they they will do you a lot of harm they'll give you a lot of trouble smoking drinking all these things that, you know, they're very harmful for people. And some people will say, oh, I don't do it all the time. I just do it sometimes. Okay, as you do it, you know, you, you get results. You get the results of your work. You do it a little bit, and then gradually what happens, they do it a little bit more, and then they do it a little bit more. And this way you become addicted to it. Very hard to give up. But, but love of Krishna is not going to cost you. It's not going to give you any harm. Not going, going to, not going to give you any disease. It's not going to take away all your money. It's a, rather, it's a very purifying thing. And it makes us very happy and joyful. Makes sense, uh, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Guru Maharaj, but sometimes they will say, right, uh, if some you have some desire or lust, it is better to satisfy and by after, uh, so that uh, he will get away of the desire. But Bhagavad well, that, Gita that's says... Not but that doesn't happen. We just read, just in this verse, we heard, lust is never satisfied. It burns like fire. It's never satisfied. The more you put fuel on the fire, it's never enough. You have to put more fuel on. It needs more and more. So the same way you try to satisfy the lust, you want to satisfy it more and more and more. You never, you never have enough. You never get enough. This is a problem. This is the nature of lust, that it's never satisfied. You never get enough. You always want more and more. And we get more, and, and when we don't get it, we become more angry. If we do get it, we, we, we become more greedy. We want more. People taking drugs and alcohol, or sex or so on, they want more and more. They become addicted, they don't get it, they become angry, they become greedy. And so this is the nature of material lust that is never satisfied, but the illusion is that no, I'll be satisfied, but it's not true. The people are not satisfied. 
described here. Krishna says, lust is not satisfied. It will keep burning, agitating more. Prabhupada gives another example. He talks about you may have a skin disease. You have some irritation in the skin. And so then you scratch. So the scratching does not, or oh, maybe a mosquito bite, something like that. Mosquito bites you and you scratch and then you scratch and you scratch more and you scratch more. And your skin becomes infected. It doesn't get rid of the irritation. You keep having to scratch and becomes more infected. So material desire is like that. There's a lust, it's like the burning sensation in the skin, the irritation. It's never satisfied. We keep trying, but never satisfied. So it's an important point to understand and to be convinced of. The illusion is, I'll just have one more, I'll be satisfied. I'll just do it one more time, I'll be satisfied. No, no, no way. It doesn't happen. So it has to be very controlled, regulated. In other words, it sh should be done not for our own pleasure, but we should do it by way of service to Krishna. It should be done as yoga. That is actually control of the senses. You do everything as a yoga. The yoga of eating. The yoga of sleeping. So all of our activities, working, recreation, they can all be done as yoga. That is control of the senses. That is real regulation. So this is a very important section of the Bhagavad Gita. Very basic knowledge. Very important for all of us. If we can apply these principles, it can help us a lot in our daily life. Is it clear, Vaishnavi? Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's clear now. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, one question. Uh, Arjuna said that uh, the mind, manas, is uh, very changeable. Is it uh, the nature of manas or it is our habit uh, to pull it uh, back and forth? Yeah, it's the nature of the mind to be flickering and unsteady. Arjuna described like this, when Lord Krishna was asking him to do yoga, to meditation, to do meditation, Arjuna said, I cannot do it. He said, my mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate. He said, it's more difficult to control than the wind. Right? Chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna said, I can't do it. I can't control my mind. And, but Lord Krishna then says, well, I know it's difficult, but it is possible. And Lord Krishna then tells Arjuna what he needs to do in order to control the mind. He said, you have to practice. You have to practice. And he said, by constant practice and detachment, then you can do it. So this is the process. You want to make the mind steady. Two things are required. You have to be willing to practice. It's not going to be easy. Just like, you know, you want to, you know, say I wanted to speak Russian. You know, it's very difficult. It's a really tricky language to say the words 
in Russian. Well, and similar for a Russian to speak English is not very easy. But by practice, you can do it. So practice is very a very important part and also detachment. If we, if we are holding on to so many thoughts and material desires in our mind, then the mind will be restless. The mind will be changing all the time. But if we are willing to let go and to be detached, we're just willing to give up all these material thoughts, what we want, you know, I want, I want to have wealth, I want fame, I want power, I want this, I want that, a big list of demands. But if we just let go and just say, okay, Krishna, whatever you want, I'm surrendered to you. We just detach ourselves. That's important. Then the mind can become steady. You understand, Mataji, how to control the mind? Yes, I think we need our sadhana for a long time. <laughs> well, practice, not, not really for a long time, but if you do good sadhana every day, you know, if you're every day waking up early and you do chanting every morning, how many rounds are you chanting? 16. How long have you been chanting? Uh, one year. Okay, so not very long. Yes. I'm agree, it's not very long. <laughs> but it's good. And you've been following four principles also? Yes, and I get up at four o'clock every day. Oh, wonderful. Yes. <laughs> very good. Well, I'm sure you're making a lot of progress. And gradually the mind will become regulated, although maybe you don't appreciate it so much. But if you keep doing it, you know, already you're doing it for a year, it's very good. And you, you, you cook your own food? Yes, yes, I cook myself. Very nice. And you offer to Krishna? Yes, yes, every time. Oh. Very good. Do you have any family there with you? No, I'm alone. Oh, you're very lucky. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree with you. You don't have people to distract you. Yes, yes. It's exactly so. <laughs> you are correct. You can just chant the holy name. You can wake up early in the morning without just people complaining about you. Yes, and we have uh, Katha, Krishna Katha with Rajarani Mataji every evening. Every evening? Yes. Wow, wonderful. <laughs> okay. Did you take the courses yet? Did you do the Iskon Disciple course? Yes. And did you do the Bhakti Shastri course yet? Bhakti Shastri, no. Uh, the pupil in Iskon and uh, uh, Shradha in Bhakti Lata school. Okay. Bhakti Lata school. Yes. Okay. So very nice. I think you're doing very well. I think you're progressing. Don't you feel the no, best? I, I, I try. <laughs> I will try, Guru Maharaj. Mm. Yes. You're feeling the benefit, chanting. Sometimes we don't realize how much we've changed. But, you know, just because you're doing these things, actually, it's a big change. You're, you're so much better, so much more peaceful and calmer than you were before. Yes, I feel in a little. Mm, I'm sure. Sometimes we, we don't notice how much we've changed and how 
much we've progressed, but because you're doing these things, because you're chanting, because you're following the regulated principles, so definitely you're you're improving a lot. Big changes. I hope I will change. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai, it's all Srila Prabhupada's mercy. Yes. Prabhupada is very merciful. He give us, he's given us this process of Krishna consciousness. He brought it all over the world. He went to Russia and he planted the seed there. And so many others took it up. And now you're one of the seeds. Right? You're in Russia? Yes, yes. Where I'm are you? From, I'm Where? from Kazakhstan. I'm from Kazakhstan, but now I live in Russia. Oh, you're originally from Kazakhstan, huh? Uh -huh. Yes, from East Kazakhstan. Where are you living in Russia? Uh, uh, near Hungary. It's uh, the south Yakutia. I don't know it. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, far east, uh, far uh, east region. But far east, on, far yes. east region. Yes, but on the north. On the north. Yes. Oh, <laughs> must be very cold. Oh, very cold. Uh, a lot of snow. <laughs> it's very cold. There are no spring. There are no autumn. Only winter and very short summer. <laughs> What's the temperature now? Uh, mm, minus 10, I think minus 12. Uh, today is uh, a lot of snow. Uh, today was a lot of snow. Okay. <laughs> You're a music teacher, is it? Yes, I'm a music teacher in musical school. I finished conservatory in Saratov, it's a Russian town of River Volga. And uh, I'm PhD and now work in the musical school. You're a pianist? Yes, I'm a pianist. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right, uh, we'll chant Hare Krishna now, Vaishnavi. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadarha Shri 